Well here we have for part three and this is a bit different. Just before we start I just found this which is an international book about Bruce Lee and it goes back to the 1980s I guess it was featured in it on more than one occasion yep that's me so in part three this is something a bit different and it's difficult to explain without a person with you what makes my system different is force let's take an example if we've got one man here and another one here and this is a little th but guy that can only produce 30 pound pushing and this is a big guy he can produce a hundred pound so they both push each other now the question how much force is this man generating they're both pushing as hard as they can so this one can produce 30 pound and this can produce a hundred pound so they're both pushing hard, how much force is he producing? You're going to say a hundred pound. Wrong. To produce a force, there has to be a resistance. So if you take a cloth and hit a cloth, or take something like this and hit that, you, no matter how hard you hit it, you can't produce a big force because it's there's, there's no resistance. So for him to produce a hundred pound of force, he's got to have a hundred pound of resistance. And he hasn't, he's only got 30. So you can only produce 30 pound of force. What we're talking about here is force against force. And in that situation, the heaviest, biggest guys gonna win but this is where it gets very very subtle and this is something you can show very quickly if you've got somebody with you but well, we haven't but if you put your hand there and get you somebody pushing against you so you've got that you're both pushing and obviously the biggest is going to win the difference is with my system is understanding that force so this guy's pushing hard and what you do with this if you're the one receiving it is not to push back but to push up and that doesn't mean going Boo! but actually push up so he's pushing applying force that way and you're pushing up now, but the force is going up so what happens is his force joins your force and goes up so he produces virtually no force at all because it's going up and if you've got a partner you can try it with get opposite each other and do that try it with a force and then try just going up so you're not exerting yourself at all you're just going slightly up And on the same note, there's another one which is sort of quite amazing. And again, you can learn within about three minutes. And if Sophie Dixon's watching, she uh, learned this in about two minutes and it does work and she'll sort of certify that. If you put your arm out, I'll do it to the side there and get somebody to try and bend your arm back like that. Again, if you're stronger than the person, but you, you will still be struggling like that. But if you, you've got to consider the force like water. So if it was a hose pipe and you did, it's coming out of a little tiny hole, there's not a lot of force. If you spread your hand, then it's like a fire hose. So if you try the same thing and actually push again, so 
you're pushing against somebody's hand and they're taking the hand away but you're still pushing you're not pushing like that you're pushing against a static object and then that goes and you keep pushing so you can't see any movement but you're actually still producing that force and again if you try that and they try and bend your arm they won't be able to they'll strain like mad and it's impossible virtually to bend the arm and say within five ten minutes as long as you keep that slight force going because the same thing's happening their force is joining your force you can perhaps think of it better if you push on the side of a car obviously you're not going to push the car over but if the car now starts up and moves off you go with it because your force joins with the car force and it drags you along and you you can't actually let go you know it takes some time for you to let go because you're sort of sucked in to that force all the time and there's various other examples of, of when that sort of uh, comes into operation the interesting part is if you do that their force joins your force and of the two forces one's leading and one's following so as you do that and they're trying to exert the force their force has now joined your force and going the same way as yours so if you now do something like that they will follow you and fall over or be, dis be destroyed in some other way it's subtle because if you jerk it they will realize and change the force but if it's subtle <clears throat> you will find that they can or will follow you and you can destroy them it's all about sensitivity if you did that and then you find hang on I'm not leading I'm pulling you shouldn't be pulling you should be leading gently if you find you're pulling then they have suddenly changed and they're trying to pull you back in which case you change and attack there so that's where most martial arts fail and it's hard to demonstrate without anybody with you so I've got a little bowl this is somebody's arm if somebody attacks you we try to stay square on the reason being you, you see a lot of this of boxes that means this hand you can use this one you can't because this one is a lot you've got to do all this to effectively use that if you square on both hands exactly the same there that one that one can't reach you so you've got to do this which is telegraphing it both on you can use either hand anytime if we were straight on and as we said in the other part we punch from the center line straight to the center line that is actually going straight so that's like that going dead straight if you're doing a karate punch or a swing you're actually coming from the shoulder so to come into me it's not coming dead straight it's at an angle like that so you've got the force coming here but you've also got a big force coming in this way so when you try to block you've got to over it's, it's force against force even though the main force is coming there there's a lot of force coming in and you you if you go on to uh, youtube you can see some world-class kung fu masters and they will and you can see them straining trying to to get rid of this 
this force and they can't. So the method I came up with, and it's one that Bruce Lee came across and never really taught, he only taught to very early people that uh, I knew that uh, studied with him in the Wing Chun stage and he never sort of told anybody after that so that, that's uh, the sort of history behind it so what we do if I do that it's force against force so it's the same as doing that and pushing up we come up and twist so that's not that's force against force that isn't force against force because it's not a force there it's it's moving and what that tends to do is like the other is get people to follow and not only that you, you also get see it better if I do it that way you also get the angle changing and coming out from there we can then relax and bring the hand down because one of the faults of most systems is a punch comes they block another punch comes they block and that's called chasing the dragon you should always block them block bang otherwise you just and sooner or later you get you get hit so the idea behind this apart from there's no force against force is you can then actually trap the hand and when you trap the hand so if somebody's got my hand trapped and they're holding my hand if I try to hit them they can do this and they can if I try to kick they can and, and you get into a situation where we try and trap the hand more so than actually block so that is one of the blocks and in slow motion it, it's coming up twisting relax and coming down what's relevant here is the force and the sensitivity it's highly likely that you can come up totally relaxed twist totally relaxed come down and lower your weight and that will bring the person down with absolutely no force whatsoever if there's a lot of force you may then have to do the same as doing that of doing the force out more and using that to uh, apply the pressure so you, you can do that in a sort of uh, continuous motion of doing this type of thing so somebody's attacking you and you're continuously doing this block and, and it's it's doing two things it's clearing all the gates up round dropping down coming back clearing other gates coming back so it's like a wheel trying to punch through a, a wheel because you've got this effect so the block is up so we're going up turn relax and come down so you can if you've got force and you're doing it hard if I put my hand on somebody and, and push hard and they're pushing hard and I try to punch because they can then feel from the the force if it's relaxed <laughs> there's no feedback on where the force is suddenly going to go so it's important to block relax bam! no information as to where bam! you're suddenly going to strike so that's one block and 
down. So a good way to practice is, is either do the continuous thing which is quite a, an exercise and you can get fairly sort of quick or as a single up down and, and at any point there because now get now the gates open his hands here and the gates open at any point you can strike you can strike any way you want you can then strike so you're best practicing up down <coughs> strike up down strike so you're never in a position where you're going to actually block and then block again so you block strike however you you want the same if we're going across we can block across if, if there's my pole again if the punch is coming there we can block across that way twist and strike so it's the same as the other one is coming across when it comes to the point of contact no impact the twist and then you know the gates open because you're inside the gate strike however you you want from there so all the movements use this continuous turn so that there's no point of contact at this time it's an interesting fact as well that doing this has a, a mental effect if you get depressed and many probably will at this point in time your mind says I'm depressed and it tells your body and what you will find is is this you're going into like a fetal position your, your body isn't open it's closed your hands are closed your head's dropping and you're getting in the fetal position because the mind is telling the body I'm depressed the thing is the body can also tell the mind so if you find you're getting depressed and like that by doing that you're opening up your body and the mind says oh hang on I'm not depressed anymore because it's all open and the force is going out and it does actually work it's not sort of instantaneous but if you are depressed it will have that effect of getting rid of the depression if it's about depression you'll find 20 minutes later and you might be back there but it will if you keep doing it it will change your, your actual mind and it's a good actual exercise anyway to uh, open up it's all really based on acupuncture and the force life force that when we're ill again you see it a normal healthy person gives out their life force all day every time I hi Mrs Jones my life force is going out I'm open I uh, depressed you're closing up this life force because the Chinese believe that you breathe in the life force and then you pass it out as it goes through your body and keeps your, your body alive if you if you don't pass it out it's like a glass of water it's then full and going here yeah. so it's an interesting thought at, at this time